Hello folks, my name is Mark and it's time for another toy review. How you guys doing? So right now I'm looking at the DC Primal Age figures, uh, Wave 2. I did a previous video for Wave 1. Um, so I've got all of them here except for the Flash, so let's take a look. Uh, first off we got Superman, right? Pretty cool, you know, he's got like that sort of uh, armor going across here. Uh, he's got like a gold spike ball for a weapon. You know, you can kind of see stitching and stuff on his boots and everything like it's made out of like leather or whatever. So in this series, there's um, five figures, Superman, Lex Luthor, Black Manta, Bizarro, and The Flash, right? So there's The Flash right there. So I have all of them except for The Flash, so, but I'll be getting him next. And Superman is nobody without Lex Luthor. Pretty cool. He's a... Uh, Kind of a medieval take on his um, purple and green power armor and he's got a kryptonite uh, ball for a weapon that's kind of cool and then we got bizarro to go with superman um kind of awesome stuff you know the the spike weapon is on the other side it's got sort of like a frankensteinish sort of you know zombie looking face there and that's pretty awesome and then black manta which I think is really, really awesome. I think that figure turned out really well. Um, I really like the look of that. So let's uh, let's open some of these guys up here. So let's start with uh, let's start with Superman. Right. So I was actually wondering if they were going to make a Superman figure because it's sort of like why would Superman be a be a barbarian, <laughs> you know? And uh, so yeah, I guess that's kind of cool that they did. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, he comes with a shield. Okay, so let's toss that aside. So, let's see. He comes with this super shield, which I don't know why Superman would need a shield, really. I mean, he's Superman, but uh, let's see. Figure looks good. I like the, I like the, you know, little details on there. Like, he's got like, uh, you can kind of see stitching going on his suit there. Like, it's, you know, leather or something. He's got like barrettes and everything and like a belt, you know, belt buckle. So that's really cool. The, the sculpt is really clean. There's this thing goes on his wrist right here. So let's put that on. One thing I noticed with these figures, which is actually a complaint I have with the other series, is that the accessories are very fragile. So when you have like stuff like this that clips on, you got to be careful because that shit will break. <laughs> <laughs> right. Luckily, uh, Superman doesn't actually come with an additional weapon, so another thing is that their hands are very stiff. And trying to put the weapons in their hands is always really hard, so it's kind of nice that his his is just straight up, you know, just his hand. Um, I don't know if that means that he lost his hand at some point, and then, like, they put it on. I know that there's an associated, um, associated comic book that came with this, but I haven't bought it. I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Pretty cool. Okay, let's do Lex Luthor next. Uh, let's see. I like the uh, I like the look of his armor there. He's got kind of a um, like they took the, the usual Lex Luthor uh, power armor and adapted it to a you know kind of Dark Lord sort of thing. Uh, let's see. He doesn't look like he comes with any other accessories. So there's no shield or anything for him. It's just straight up, you know, you'd think he'd come with a ray gun or something, but, um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. So this thing is attached to a shoulder. You see the, the shoulder pads, it actually moves with a shoulder. <laughs> it's not attached to that. It's attached to a shoulder. So you see it kind of goes up and down. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty good. Wow. This is, joints are very, very stiff here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think he looks clean. He's got, like, jewels and stuff, you know? He's got, like, you can see little details going in there. Uh, I don't know, what is that? Oh, it's kind of a stain. Huh. I guess that's, uh, paint application, but that, that's okay. There are, I have noticed, um, with these things, little quality control issues like that, but usually they're very, very minor, you know? Um, ooh, I like that. I like the details on his boots there. Pretty cool, okay, he can uh, come over here and fight Superman. <laughs> right. Um, let's see, they, and also, also they balance really well, these figures. You know, I haven't had any problems with him, like, falling over or anything. Alright, next we got Bizarro. So, 
Bizarro, of course, comes from Bizarro World, where everything is backwards, which is a big cube that floats through the, uh, you know, space instead of a circle, and you know how Superman has a uh, fortress of solitude filled with, like, incredible machines and valuables and stuff, so he has just, like, you know, a house filled with useless junk. <laughs> so that's actually really cool, though. I like how the S is backwards, right? Everything's on the opposite side, so if you look at uh, him versus Superman, you see like their their weapons are on the opposite sides there, you know, their uh, chess symbols are in verse, okay? Not bad, not bad, so... I know and I wonder if he's supposed to be like a clone or something. I, I think in the current comics, Bizarro is a clone. You know, he's not like... He's not like from an alternate universe or whatever. But, I don't know, maybe. I mean, I haven't actually read Superman in quite a while. And he comes with a shield, which is the same. <laughs> it's got a number one on it. Oh, that's actually really... Okay, okay, so that's actually straight out of the comics there. The Bizarro number one. You know, that's that's a nice little uh, homage. Let's see, so... Let's put that on his arm here. So you want to be careful with these. Make sure when you put the stuff on that you're not... Sna um. Don't stress it too much, because that, that stuff will break. That actually happened with my Mr. Freeze uh, figure, and his shield snapped right off. And let's see, last one. Let's do Black Vanta. I think out of the ones that I saw here, this is the one I was anticipating the most, Black Manta, because he just looks cool as hell. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's really cool. I like how they... Uh, yeah, they, they stuck with the classic um, helmet. They didn't try to update it into anything like high-tech or, you know, whatever. Uh, he's got like a very sort of, you know, 19th century kind of, you know, diving bell kind of thing. Like he's like from like 1887 or some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, there's like little crust, uh, crusty muscles and, and crustaceans and things all sort of like, you know barnacles all up on his uh, suit there <laughs> right and let's see he comes with two swords okay that's cool I wonder if they took this out of the oh wow okay well that's that's nice they actually fit in his hands there rather easily in fact this one's a little loose but that's okay you know I guess that's better than than having to like force it in there you know let's see if it'll fit in this hand easier mm, okay so the swords look exactly the same Okay, well anyway, that actually looks pretty cool. I'm actually very, very happy with that. So, I think, yeah, he looks awesome. So, anyway. Now, just to kind of show you, you know, here was, uh, from last time, um, Batman. <laughs> so you can kind of see how, so all of these figures, you know, how they fit in well. <clears throat> looks pretty good. And just to kind of show you a couple of things here, uh, this here is a vintage Masters of the Universe action figure. So you can kind of see where they're getting their styling from. This is uh, He-Man, obviously. And you can see that that's what they're making these to fit in with. You know, they're, they're copying the proportions, the body proportions and stuff like that of these classic Masters of the Universe figures. <laughs> they're copying the aesthetic of them. Right, and it wasn't just because it wasn't just He-Man. There are lots of other other figures that look just like this. In fact, I think these look more like warrior beasts. Which, if you don't know what warrior beasts are, here's an example of a warrior beast. You know, they're a lot stockier. They have um, rounder, more exaggerated muscles and things like that. And that's sort of, I think, um, these figures. You know, the DC Primal Age. I think they're they're closer to warrior beasts than Masters of the Universe, but. Anyway, they look really good on the shelf with all of them, so I'm very, very happy about these. So before we go, there is a couple of things I do want to say, though. Um, if you do buy these, right, uh, and, and you're, like, actually buying them for a child to, like, play with and stuff, uh, there's a couple of things to be aware of. Um, first off, the accessories are very fragile, like I said, especially if you have shields like this. Um, you want to be careful putting these on and off the... Uh, the hands, you know, the because the, because a lot of these figures come with come with shields with these sort of like little clips. These clips, like I said before, will snap right off. You got to be really really careful. Uh, additionally, um, 
any of them that have weapons, you know, kind of like this one does. Um, putting them inside of the hands is kind of tough, some because their hands are not flexible at all. And uh, so you want to be very careful because you'll scrape the paint off on the inside of the hands. That happened with my Green Lantern actually, trying to put the, uh, you know, putting the axe inside Green Lantern's hand, right? Also, I've, ar I've already broken one of the um, one of the um, swords for one of the other figures too, trying to jam it in there. So I've noticed like, like for example, this hand fits really well, this one doesn't. There's a little bit of like, you know, some quality control issues like that, things to be aware of. Um, also, you know, here and there you'll see little paint, you know, uh, paint uh, imperfections and things, but they're usually not too bad. But the, the main thing to be aware of is that their legs will, um, they'll fall right off. <laughs> so that's actually happened to this Batman here a couple of times. If you notice the legs, like they have this sort of peg and it already like broke. I don't know if you can see that, but inside of there, there's a chip missing. So it, it goes on and it fits well enough and it fits well enough to, to display well on a shelf. You know, it's not going to fall over. But I can imagine as a child, you know, if I was like, you know, 11 or something, <laughs> like 10 years old, 11, and I was actually like playing with these things, you know, psh, psh, or whatever, they would be very, very fragile. You know, they're, they don't... Um, one thing about Masters of the Universe figures is that He-Man toys are pretty much indestructible. You know, you could throw these things around, you can uh, play with them in the bathtub, you know, you can you can throw them out of a two-story window, and they're not going to break. They're like, you know, that perfect type of like, you know, re resilient rubber and plastic that makes them last. And that's why there's that's why there's so many of the vintage ones are still around 30 years later. I, I couldn't say the same about these guys. These guys will snap right up, snap right open. <laughs> so. Be careful, you know, if you're an adult collector and you put them on a high shelf, if they fall down, you know, the stuff will break on them, so just be aware of that. Um, they're not really made for rough play. I think they're, I think they're really made with the uh, collector, you know, the adult collector in mind. You know, someone who's not going to be um, tossing these around against walls and, and throwing them, you know, <laughs> smashing them into each other and things like that. So, um, with that in mind though, I mean, I think they're actually really, really cool, you know, and I'd like to see a couple of more characters, you know, I'd, I'd love to see um, Green Arrow. <laughs> I mean, come on, man, Green Arrow is is like a shoe-in for this, uh, you know, medieval style, this barbarian style. Hawkman, Hawk Girl, come on, dude, Hawk, Hawkman would look awesome like this, you know. Um, so anyway. I think they have a, a lot more uh, characters they could do, and I'm, I'm waiting, I'm looking to see which ones are going to come out next, so I'm actually very pleased with them. Anyway, that's all I got, folks. Adios.